into new communities that I see like there's so much potential there you know if like I think there's like a thing where it's like I do see potential for really great things and like you know even being a part of groups that you know I never imagined would be existing right now but do and feeling a part of certain things but then there's certain times where yeah, it just feels like everyone is just reacting and trauma reacting at each other. Oh, and yeah. like no one's actually stopping to listen. So yes, when certain folks by POC queer folks where the system does not work for them, when they say, hey, the way this is does not work for me, they're is this reactionary thing that happens for anyone that's in a positionality where it might work for them a little better. And there's like this resistance to hearing it. And like, I don't know, I come to find that I think it, it, I feel like it's that resistance is connected to idea of um, the idea of comfort being freedom or the idea of comfort you know what I mean and so when if people for just a minute just take a time out and be like this is making me feel a way let me step away from the computer practice some mindfulness maybe journal maybe like ask a friend or two take some deep breaths that's the first thing a person should do take like a breath or two yeah and then come back and respond I feel like there is room for people to have better and more thoughtful conversations if we didn't just go into fight or flight when people ask them to question their positionality Mm -hmm. in this structure. Right. Where it absolutely. And I mean, even even just the suggestion of of engaging in a mindfulness practice for a little while to like kind of deactivate your emotional response. I mean it's wild to think that, like, in the year of our Lord, 2021, that the uh, the concept of mindfulness is still so foreign to so many people. But, I mean, really, it's, I think the thing that, that can be really scary about that is that it is more or less asking people to de-center themselves, right? Like, mindfulness is the practice of looking at the world around you from an objective standpoint as opposed to what's going on inside of your head and i mean i feel like i feel like the last year of everyone more or less living in quarantine the whole time like half of the world has really started to look at that because that's kind of where some people have gravitated to in quarantine and then i feel like the other half of the world approximately a half anyway has gone the opposite direction like running as far away from themselves and looking at themselves that way as possible so yeah it's kind of the perfect storm for the internet so that people can just yell at each other about it yeah yeah i'm just like everyone's yelling but no one's listening (laughs) yeah yeah Yeah. Mm -hmm. i feel like we rob ourselves of a lot of progress and meaningful conversations that way Can I ask us to go back a little bit to what you were saying about some of your clients? And this was like in the same uh, breath that you were talking about uh, people being, you know, not rooted to anything. Um, But you also said that you you try to help your clients find an intention. Yes. And and that that blows their minds. And I had this brief flash of like, oh, my God, you're doing healing work for your clients like. You yeah. introduced yourself as as you'd like to think of yourself as a healer. And I was like, it's right. That's it. That's right. That's what yes. you're doing. <laughs> um, yes, it is. It is something that I'm doing. Um, I cannot take the I cannot take all of the credit for doing that. But I thank my lucky stars for finding um, this amazing human being. Um, they on Instagram, I, I will shout them out to the freaking rooftops because <laughs> she is so amazing but um hoser healers is their instagram handle um and then um amira that is the name of the person who started and founded this and um also queer like sex worker 
person who later um, learned Reiki and got initiated into Reiki um, years after years after um, being in her Reiki practice, she noticed a very specific need um, to only work with sex workers and sexual abuse survivors. And from then on, she's kind of grown this practice where she actually teaches sex workers Reiki as well. I've learned Reiki from her and she decenters colonization in it. She de- she's she decenters colonization and she actually invites people to learn about the methods of healing that are indigenous to them. And it has totally like changed my life. It's changed my, the way I approach my sex work. It has, you know, it's just totally changed my entire world. And She's created an online community outside of Instagram as well. Like she actually has created an app so that sex workers and sexual abuse survivors can have an online community where we aren't censored from the internet. Yeah. Also look up poser healers um, as the app. Like, yeah, this person. um, Yeah. I cannot shout out Amira enough. If you hear this, I love you. Um, (laughs) And yeah, like, honestly, and that's like what I'm saying, like, out of this pandemic, there are these groups and these things where people are, I think, finally starting to remember. And like, yeah, Amir is the one who kind of really creates an environment and situation where it's like, sex workers are healers, sex workers are people who have, who have a propensity to create and transmute energy um, in ways different than, you know, other people can. But who's to say that sex cannot be a medium to move and transmute energy and heal? Because it always has been. I noticed this, you know, I noticed I was doing this when I was a dominatrix sometimes Mm -hmm. where I was like, we were really doing BDSM, but it was something else. But like, <laughs> yes, you know, like, yeah, it is a thing. I think you can, I think you can help heal. And I think you can be able to open people's eyes to parts and things they haven't um, seen or experienced before. But it's really funny because I think because of how people look at sex and because people use sex from a traumatized place they don't even realize or like know what they're getting into and so like yeah you know you have these like weird men like coming I think like expecting sometimes like expecting this like one thing and then like you know when they talk to me more and when I ask them certain questions you know like even in my, you know, pro dom application, like I ask what, what, you know, out of the five love languages, what love language do you, what are your top two love languages you like to receive? What are your top two love languages you like to give? Cause I like to know what I'm getting out of the situation too. If I'm providing you with this energy, are you going to give me gifts? Are you going to praise me? Are you (laughs) going to, because these are things, you know what I mean? And I think people sometimes look at sex work once again, from this capitalist view where it's like, I'm paying you money. Therefore I can do whatever the fuck I want to you. And I'm like, no, I'm precious. Actually. I'm precious. This energy that I give to you is giving more to you a lot of times than it is to me so I'm going to say you can keep your money because that's not the experience that I give um and yeah it's just very interesting it's very interesting how yeah how clients approach sex work and you can very much tell if they're coming from a traumatized place I mean, I would imagine that the vast majority of people, especially in America, 
come to most sexual experiences from a traumatized place? Which I mean, that's not bad or wrong. No, no, it's just where we're all coming from. Right. It's not bad or wrong. Honestly, they're coming to the right place. But it's really funny because they're coming to the right place, but they don't, I don't think they understand what they're asking for. (laughs) Well, yeah. I mean, that's one thing that I think I really wanted to do with this podcast particularly is put some language around some of these things that people just don't know how to express. And I think that goes doubly when we're talking about sexuality. Like, there's so much shame, there is so much fear, and there's so much darkness around even just like our most basic sexual desires for so many people that we don't even have language for. We don't know how to express it. It is like, It's the most raw, most personal, most vulnerable thing. And one thing that we do not feel comfortable with is vulnerability. So, yeah, I just, I, I feel like there's, there's so much room for growth there, (laughs) I guess. Like, there really is room for growth. Like, what if, what if the whole structure of capitalism didn't teach women to be in competition with each other and what if more women actually went to more sex workers Mm -hmm. yeah over some of the trauma and shame around their body oh my god (laughs) people at home nikki is currently making wide gestures I'm just saying, like, you know, I think um, sex workers are very underutilized for, I think, our capabilities, the multifaceted nature of what we do. Um, I really think that there's like, if you if you cut it down to like the bare basics, you know, the (sighs) sex is has the potential anyway for creating pleasure and joy and connection and it is really telling of i don't know the world that we live in that it has become such a source of shame and fear and pain um and so i think there's really like you know even even for people who are less woo woo than we are like i think that there's just a very real undeniable fact that sex can produce beautiful energy and has that ability and people who are facilitating that are are straight up doing a good service like that is benefiting people well and even i just while you were talking i just even remembered like where is our root chakra located like our root chakra our genitals and our anus like our sex organs (laughs) like And, you know, exactly. And it's like you say, like, what are people rooted in? And if there is that trauma that's there that keeps you from being able to do that, who are the people that are going to help? Who, what better group of people to help move and lubricate and expand and and work with in that, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Oh, Mike, drop. Right? <laughs> like, well, we're done. Yeah. We, we figured it all out. <laughs> right. All right. Party. Your moms. Tell everybody. Tell your friends. <laughs> no, actually, this is a really good opportunity. Um, if you have any websites, platforms, anything that you want the world to know about, please, you know, this is your opportunity. Um. For anyone interested in doing any of the work that I was talking about, you can find me at my OnlyFans, OnlyFans.com slash Nikki Darling, N-I-K-K-I-D-A-R-L-I-N-G. You can also find me uh, on my Twitter at Nikki underscore darling XO. You can find me on my Instagram at Nikki darling XO. 
and or also if you are into sad boy poetry and random photography and shit and like my weird earworms you can find me at um my instagram at paisley underscore underscore park <laughs>